Balakun, a bridge to Ukraine. Join the conversation at balakun.co. Balakun, міст в Україну. Долучайтесь до наших розмов на 3w.balakun.co. Welcome. This session, we have a very special guest with us, Mavile, and we are going to be talking about Crimean Tatars. I think that our guest will introduce herself. I just wanted to add something in the beginning that as we started our podcast with perception, the perception of Crimean Tatars is a very tough and uh, serious question, as even between Ukrainians, in the society of Crimea, Crimean Tatars were percepted in a very wrong way and little was known about their history, about their traditions, about their customs and who they really are. And I wanted to, to open up this window and uh, I wanted Marilet to tell more about uh, Crimean Tatar nation and why Crimean Tatars are not Tatars. Okay. Hello, guys, again. <laughs> Uh, first of all, thanks for invitation and thanks for a chance to tell you and our listeners uh, more about Crimean Tatars. For someone, it can be uh, kind of new information. For someone, um, I maybe can add something about their knowledge about Crimean Tatars. And um, I also want to show uh, who are Crimean Tatars. I all very want to show you our history. Uh, and also I want to warn, I'm not a professional uh, historian. Yeah, and it's just my knowledge. Um, and uh, I want to explain, uh, I think to, um, good way to a uh, good way to explain our values uh it's show you our history uh, which events uh we had in our history uh about our religion and our tradition i think this like two ways um help us to ex- help me first of all to explain you who are Crimean Tatars. And we also have this heading on our podcast when I uh, teach Sandy some uh, Ukrainian words and uh, making her pronounce this word and uh, a sentence using this word. And I would think that it would be fair enough for today that uh, Mavilea uh, teaches both of us a uh, Crimean Tatar word and a sentence Okay, well, I think yeah, we can do something together. I want to, I wanted to start uh, with uh, history and uh, who Crimean Tatar, who are Crimean Tatars. But if we speak about language, yes, uh, Crimean Tatar language is one of the Turic languages, and uh, it gives us a lot of opportunities because Turic world it's a very big world. And for example, and our languages are similar. And for example, if you know Crimean Tatar uh, language, um, on a, even on a beginner level, yes, uh, you can understand people from Azerbaijan, from Turkey, uh, I don't know, or from Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan. Of course, you can't. Um, speak uh, with them fluently, but I mean, uh, base phrases uh, uh, you can understand. And it's uh, a very good, uh, I think, goal to learn uh, one of the Turkic uh, languages, yes, for example, Crimean Tatar language, because it's like a key for whole Turkic world and uh, Turkic world, and uh, it helps us it helps you, first of all, to understand a lot of people. That's re- that's really wonderful. And uh, I knew that uh, Crimean Tatar was a very uh, 
like uh, it had some same phrases as Turkish, as uh, I heard that many Crimean Tatars actually understood Turkish, but I didn't realize the scale of it. So like uh, Kazakhs and Uzbeks and all the other nations of who are of, uh, of the Turkish origin. Yeah, yeah. It's really true. Uh, and if you know, in ninth century, Tatar language, it was like lingua franca for whole people who came to Crimea because it was like point uh, Crimea, it was like a land uh, and through this land, a lot of people travel uh, to buy something, to sell something. And uh, one common language that uh, helped uh, people to speak with each other, it was Crimean Tatar. I uh, read some articles about all this and I was in shock if we honest uh, because uh, and I was in shock and I was proud. And uh, if we say about modern Turek world, it's really huge. Are there other cultural aspects that are similar between between all of these things or is it mostly just language? Uh, we have uh, maybe uh, because of our religion, we all have common religion. Mm, and uh, if we say about religion, uh, its influence on our culture and we have maybe same uh, same holidays yes but um we are same and in the same time we have um, our own identity and i think it's beautiful because not all our holidays and not all our tradition are same but language um help if you know some of the Turek language it helps you to communicate with other and i think it's very good it's like you know i even it's really it's like one one of the languages that it's common for and uh, uh in crimean Tatar language we have three dialects and all of or three accents and all of these accents, for example, if we speak about one of the accents, it's same with Turkish language. Uh, another accent, it's same with uh, Kazakh language. And um, also, for example, source our accent is same with another part of Turkic world. And that's why it helps us to understand more people. So who are Crimean Tatars? Let's start from the very beginning. Okay, so if we start uh, with beginning, yes, yeah, so Crimean Tatars are indigenous um, inhabitants of Crimea, yes, and we historically formed in the Crimean Peninsula. Uh, so we formed there, um, I think, over the thousand years and uh, influence of many factor its specific features of the anthropological type race language character tradition religion and everyday life of the um, indigenous people have appeared so it was difficult process and uh, it was influenced by many uh, peoples and uh, unions at different times. Uh, for example, if we say, for example, uh, Taurians, yes, uh, Crimean, Skifans, uh, Sarmash, uh, Sarmatians, Elans, Helens, uh, so a lot of uh, ancient uh, nations, yes, and uh, many other were direct, like. Um, how to say, the direct influence uh, of modern Crimean Tatars. And uh, it cannot be said that someone more or someone less had an impact on the Crimeans. They all made their significant genetic contribution and laid their foundation for the future nation. nation. Uh, which is, um, I mean, in the 15th century, would create its own independent state. And uh, if you want to know, for example, uh, we, if we say about our 
uh, I um, before I told you yes about uh, our accents, our dialect, and despite the monolithic nature of the Crimean nation, today it is divided in the three main, it's like top um, ethnic groups. It's uh, uh, mountain Tatars, yes, it's uh, steppe Tatars, we say in Crimean Tatars, we say uh, no railer. And Southern Coastal, it's uh, people who live uh, on the coast of Black Sea. It's we in Crimean Tatar, we say Yalubuidu. And among themselves, and representative of these three groups are, uh, are uh, destinated by types, futures of the dialect, and some futures in customs. But important factor was the a habitat of each of three uh, sub ethnic groups. If it's if I say like in very short form for you, uh, yes. Uh, how will uh, how uh, was uh, how were we created in Crimea? So we created in Crimea, and it's very uh, important fact that we have to know. We didn't came from Tatarstan like a lot of people can imagine yes um i don't know we didn't we created uh in crimea and it's main idea that i want to i provide every time and uh i tell everyone that we created in crimea it's very important yeah and actually i was talking to my mentor the other day and he told me uh the term tatars itself that there are tatars and, the, uh, and so on and so forth and i corrected him not tatars but crimean tatars and uh i know that there is a difference between these uh, names and uh, there are also some different some other names for uh you crimean tatars so what's the right name of it uh, is it uh, crimean tatars or another one how do you call yourself uh yeah you know now uh, even in crimean tatar area it's very debatable question i try to explain why uh because uh some parts of crimean tatars uh, say that uh, the name crimean tatars it was um, uh, given by Russian Empire, yes, uh, to clean your identity because in Russian language, Tatar it's all who are outsiders, yes, all outsiders they call them Tatar, and that's why um, for now now it's for some uh, for someone who do, uh, who don't know these like differences, it's we are all Tatars. And they can't like um, separate, yes, who are Crimean Tatars and who are, uh, I don't know, Kazan Tatars, for example. They even don't know what is different. Um, I also think of it like uh, there is a heritage, a history uh, event of the Mongol Tatar invasion. And I think that it's also a way to uh, put some label on Crimean Tatars that they were the one who invaded. Yeah, but uh, it's not very correct because uh, we are not very uh, connected to his Mongol Tatars. It's uh, quite different stories. But because of this name Tatar, a lot of people who uh, don't know history Yes, he tried to like connect uh, to ways of uh, and make like a uh, oh, um, common story, same story for us, but it's not, um, it's not correct. If we, sp and another part, uh, another part of Crimean Tatar, they say that um, it's like, we have to call um, us like Hrungva, it means somebody who are from Crimea, you know? And uh, one part says, uh, and find some sources where uh, they they show like, look, there was, for example, 300 years was like uh, just Hormo, or without any Tatar, etc. 
uh, another part says, look, no, you are not right. Uh, we have some sources uh, and there are, um, and there is name like uh, Crimean Tatars. And uh, even nowadays, it's very debatable. It's really debatable question. And I think uh, we have to study and we have to learn more sources uh, to give a uh, correct answer for this. It's first of all about our identity. Um, and I think uh, I, uh, I also can't say what is true, what is it false, yes. Uh, because, uh, as I told you before, I'm not the historian and I can't say uh, what is it true. Uh, and that's why I, I will wait for what our scientists uh, uh, will show us, which facts they will give us. Maybe um, we have to... Um, we have to learn more our archives yes, to find some information. Because even for today, it's very, it's really debatable question. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the second name that you mentioned is uh, the one who lived in Crimea, like uh, as far as I pronounce it correctly, it's Khrimli, right? Yes. Yes, Khrimli, we also say. It has uh, uh, Krim in in it, and what's the what's the name uh, Krim? It's Crimea itself. What what's this meaning? What's the origin of it? There are a lot of also uh, some different um, different like explanation. What word is it? How to explain it? And uh, some sources say it's like a land. Yes, some source like it's like a peninsula from all ancient languages. Mm, and it's also a very, you know, complicated story. Is it a, is it a Crimea Tatar word? Uh, if we say, uh, I think it came to Crimean Tatar language, but I'm not sure what language, uh, from what language it came. Uh, we say like in Crimean Tatar's way, yes, we say like Khoram, and so we write it, so we spell it, uh, yeah. Uh, but uh, I'm not sure is it um, what language, yes, I mean ancient language is came from. I read somewhere that it, it means island, or is that just a simple translation? Yes, it's very simple tr translation, like island or like a peninsula, yes, but it's uh, from our um, ancient uh, languages. But I think we have to, yeah, we have to uh, check it more carefully, I mean, to find some more sources that can show it us. Because uh, now it's just some theories, yes, uh, what uh, no one can be uh, sure to 100% that it was from, because even our language, Crimean Tatar language, is also based on the uh, ancient languages. Uh, I mean, um, because the people who lived before, yes, and they also speak in different languages, uh, this language is mixed, yes, and also these people also mixed, and Crimean Tatar created with their language. I think it's it's some complicated process and uh, it's difficult to answer that it just uh, what language it was yes and as I told you before the in Crimea lived uh, a lot of nations and uh, uh, all of them like influenced uh, of influenced on our on influence on Crimean Tatar even our for our for modern Crimean Tatar, because if you see um, a modern Crimean Tatar, we are very different. Yes, uh, we can be uh, our appearance. It's really very different. Um, in Crimean Tatars, you say you can see also people with blonde hair, with black hair, with different eyes, with different uh, skin, and sometimes it like 
see and you can't um, you can't even imagine yes that it uh he is or she is pregnant that's a, that's why i think it's like uh, it's a result of this process that was uh, i don't know thousand years ago mm -hmm. so the word kirim is is the place and kirimli is the people is that right yeah Yes, people who are from Crimea, if we translate like, or uh, if it's translated word by word, yeah. That's why uh, one part of, uh, yeah, one part of, uh, of Crimean Tatars, one part of Crimean Tatars, they don't like uh, this name Kurumlo because it's translated, it means like people who are from Crimea and they explain like people who are from C Crimea, it's and, in Greeks and I don't know, and Ukrainians and uh, Russians and Crimean Tatars also yes, uh, but it's uh, diff it's difficult to separate um, and to understand uh, what people what person do you mean? I mean about the, about his nationality, and that's why yeah, as I told you before, it's really a debated question, and so we have to. Uh, study it more carefully. Are these debates uh, based on subethnical uh, differences or just uh, personal opinion? Of personal opinion and kind of sources uh, that people use and that people mentioned. And uh, all of these sources, it's really respectful sources. And even when I watched interview of our scientists who debate about this uh, question, about this question, yes, uh, oh, mm, they are, they, uh, they are all very confident, yes, and it's really difficult to understand the real, uh, the real reason and the real answer. Uh, that's why I think we have to study more. So that's uh, all the uh, reason and all the all it goes from the history, I, I guess, and all the that there was a bunch of nations that assimilated into uh, Crimea Tatar nation, and uh, so that's uh, the different approaches became afterwards. Yes, and you have to also remember that a lot of our uh, documents, uh, imported documents, are in archives, and usually if these archives not in Crimea, even not in Ukraine, they are unusual in Moscow. Yes, and uh, it's very difficult to uh, to take something there, and even to find something or to have. Um, to have opportunity yes, to, um, to take this uh, information. That's why I think uh, we have to work on this. We have to work, we have to study this. And how is, uh, how is history formed? Like the history of Crimean Tatars formed so far? Like, uh, are there a lot of white gaps or is it a, uh, a some somewhat uh, formed like a uh, line, the cone line of the history. Uh, if we speak about Crimean Tatar, so um, I think uh, I have to say about Crimean Hanat. Yes, it was multinational, multi confessional entity, and in the modern concept, it's a well, very tolerant state. Um, here lived and Crimean Tatals and Karaites and Krimchaks, Urums. It's like uh, dissidents of the Hillans, uh, dissidents of the Goths, Armenians, um, Crimean Romani, or we call them Urmancheli, if, in, if you're here. Um, all of them are subject of the Crimean Han. They lived in peace and harmony and uh, in accordance with the law and uh, thanks to the wise uh, policies of Crimean rules, a unique system of balance and uh, they lived in the tolerance. So was it was it some sort of uh, 
was it some sort of federation that time it wasn't federation it just i mean all the all of consequences uh, made um um for comfortable life for whole citizens of this hand you know uh if you are muslim you can go to the mosque yes if you are uh, i don't know christian you can go to the church and uh, they don't have any problems of how to communicate uh, because as i told you there was a very wise uh, politician how to um, in uh, how to make uh, life of these people comfortable Can you explain the definition of a hanet it's like government Crimean government is it's like we have king king and we have kingdom we have khan and we have hanat i see i see uh if we say about Crimean hanet yes uh, to modern concept of nation it did not exist religion played a major role Mm, and um, if we say, for example, um, the ruling dynasty in Crimea was House of Giray and founded by first Han Haji Giray I. And uh, for example, if we say um, about the era of Crimean Han, it was a uh, heyday of Crimean Tatar culture and art and literature. And the classical Crimean Tatar poetry of that time was Ashikumyak, among other poets, it's Mahmoud Khurumla uh, and Khan Gazi II. Um, they are well known in Turek world, I mean. Uh, and um, the main of uh, preserved mon uh, monuments of that time is the Han Palace in Bakhchisarai. It's the capital of uh, Crimea. It was in the past. Now it's another city, but so uh, uh, the capital of Crimean Hanat, it was Vachisarai. And what period of time was this? It's a uh, 15th to uh, uh, 18th century. Uh, because in 18th century, Crimean Hanat became like, you know, um, like a bargain chip in the geopolitical game between Turkey and Russia. And at the end of the century, it fell in the Russian zone of influence. And in 1783, as a result of Russian victory over the Ottoman Empire, Crimea was first occupied, uh, occupied and later annexed by Russia. And uh, this uh, marked the beginning of a new era in the history of Crimean Tatars, which uh, we uh, call like black century in Crimean Tatar language, it's, we say uh, Hara Asur. It's, uh, if we translate it, yes, it's, it's like the black century. Because uh, if we say about, yes, uh, Russian policy uh, toward the Crimean Hanat with the invasion of Russian troops in Crimea as it climax was, it was like, um, if we say about annexion, yes, it was uh, accompanied by numerous violation of the rights and freedoms of the local population. And in fact, it was occupation of a sovereign and independent state of Crimean Tatars under the rule Shahim Giray. Um, because of that, uh, after this occupation, if before this occupation, Crimean Tatars was in majority yeah, there are a lot of Crimean Tatars uh, after it we also call it like first wave of deportation Crimean Tatars because all of these consequences was for some Crimean Tatars were, were very um, dangerous because of their religion because uh, and they uh, tried to survive and a lot of Crimean Tatars went to uh, moved to uh, to the center of the Ottoman Empire. It was in Turkey. Yes, it's nowadays Turkey. They moved to Turkey, and uh, if we say about modern Crimean Tatar uh, who live now in Turkey, 
and uh, whose uh, grandparents, great grandparents, uh, moved to Turkey. Yes, they um, a less amount of people know that they are real uh, Crimean Tatar because you now they lived in Turkey during three uh, hundred years, and of course, this I mean, my age. Uh, Crimean Tatar, they even less, uh, um, a small amount of people know that they are Crimean Tatar. I mean. Yes, and this is so sad. So the Crimean Tatar have become a minority, and the Russian and uh, Ukrainian settlers were coming to Crimea. And the ancient culture was subjected to harassment as a result of Russian colonial policy. Uh, but in the late of 9th century, um, is we say about like, um, you know, reformation movement maybe uh, has emerged and led by the Crimean Tatar intellectuals. First of all, it's Ismail Gostrinsky. I maybe you hear about this person. It's a teacher, writer, journalist who was published to the newspaper Terjuman. It's in it's in Crimean Tatar. If it translated in English, it's uh, Terjuman. It means translator. Yes, and so we came like to Crimean Tatar revival. Yes, it's. Uh, uh, mm, it's connected, first of all, with name of the um, cultural fig uh, figure or uh, uh, educator, Ismail Gasprinsky. If you want, I can continue to and to say about and speak about Ismail Gasprinsky. Mm, so, if you speak about Ismail Gasprinsky, he made great efforts for the revival and survival of the Crimean people. Mm, he urged his uh, compatriots not to leave Crimea because this process uh, was very painful and he understood uh, that it's like it's disaster it's real disaster that a lot of Crimean Tatars move uh, to Turkey yes and he used his newspaper Terjuman to explain to the Crimean Tatars that they are were a nation with the roots in the Crimean Earth. This nation whose history was reaching ancient times, and uh, um, like he was, um, the emphasis was placed on the fact that they were a secular nation uh, possessing full right to the homeland. Um, that's why uh, he's very important for Crimean. Uh, for Crimean Tatars, his uh, newspaper, it was uh, published in Bakhtisaray, Crimea from, if I'm not mistaken, 1883 to 1980 years. And uh, it was like, you know, um, national organ of the Muslims in Crimea and all Muslims who live in the Russian Empire and symbol of um, unity of these Muslims. And the first article in the newspaper started that Terjuman would serve to the best of its ability as a guide for clear and useful culture information. Yes, that's why um, if we speak about this, yes, two centuries, it looked like this. He seems to be a very important figure. It's a very important figure, yes, because, you know, uh, he made a lot of, if I tell you, man, it's like small piece uh, of all of his work. Um, he create a very interesting educational system for, um, you know, poor, uh, for poor people who who lived in village, for example, um, I try to explain you. Um, a lot of people who lived in village, they couldn't uh, have opportunity to teach their children. 
and he proposed them this like um, it was like way how to teach children. He proposed to make uh, small schools in the each uh, village. Yes, it was he rent the house, and uh, for example, parents who didn't have money, uh, they can bring bring everything to this something to this school it can be food i don't know it can be lots it can be some paper uh and uh, all of um, he collect uh everything and um, children in village they had chance to uh, study and this system uh, was very successful because uh in the and of this, uh, he create new, uh, really, um, he create modern program for them. Uh, and uh, he tried to make some subjects, yes, uh, separate with each other. And it was four years program. After four years, children have to pass exam. And then uh, the most talented, the most successful uh, students, uh, could go to the Turkey or to the Europe to study there and to have uh, education in the very famous universities of Europe and Turkey. Yes. And what about his last name? Uh, it's Hasprinsky. And uh, is it connected to the uh, village of Gaspra or is it just a coincidence? Uh, yeah, it connected with his. Uh, it connected to with his city, yes. But in in Ukraine, in Kremlin we say Gazpravo. This uh, ending key, it's uh, it's. I think it's more. It was uh, published in Russian sources, and that's why it's. Uh, we know it like this one. But in Crimean Tatar uh, language, we say like Ismail Gazpravo. It means somebody who came from Gazprom. Oh, it's like uh, Hermli uh, and Gazprom uh, yeah, like yeah, Lee. Yeah, is, yeah. yeah, uh, oh, yeah I say yeah. it's an interesting one. Yeah, yeah. It's something that can uh, help us to that create, and it means uh, it creates like persons. How to I try to explain persons yes who came for this area. It can the origin uh, help of, us of to people, explain yeah. area origin, yeah. So we have another thing on on the list which was um famous people of Kremlin Nation. Um I wondered if you wanted to tell us about any other other people who you think the audience should know about. You know, um, if we say about for uh, famous people, like historical, yes, it was one of the famous. It's Crimean. Uh, it's uh, it's Mayor Gostinsky and his uh, students, who uh, were also very famous, and they made a lot of uh, Crimean chapters, but. Um, the main, you know, famous person for me, it's Ismail Gasprinsky's daughter, uh, because uh, when I when I tell uh, this story for my some uh, for my friends, they were in shock because, you know, um, if you know about feminism, about suffragists in Europe. Yes, we know about this a lot. We watched film, we, but uh, if you know the first, um, the first women's rights activist and politician in Russian Empire or was a daughter, Ismail Gatprinsky's daughter, it's, her name is Shafika. And uh, she was one of the first women who, um, and she was like one of the pioneers to start women movement under these uh, conditions. I mean, like uh, that, you know, yeah, that women who lived in 
uh, before, yes, they couldn't have social, political, culture, economic life, yes, and they couldn't uh, vote. And she started this way, and all her life she struggled with her schools, organizations, and political participation efforts for the awakening of Turek uh, women about which not many people cared. Uh, and uh, when I say this story for my friends, they like sometimes they are in shock because we have a lot of uh, stereotypes about Crimean Tatars. First of all, because of our religion, and because um, we have a lot of uh, stereotypes about Muslims and uh, women, women in the Muslims world. Uh, that's why we have a lot of stereotypes about Crimean Tatar women, but it's not uh, like this, and we have to remember it. But I mean, uh, I I like this story because I want to show that we were really modern and we are modern. For us, well, it's very important to have equal rights between women and men. For us, it's very important to take part in historical, economical, political, and cultural life of our government. Yes, but this, uh, but when you colonized by somebody, yes, it's very difficult to improve these uh, skills to improve this work. And after colonizing, and after another event after colonizing we have very very big gap that stopped us uh, even for today if we speak about another famous if uh, if we say about modern uh, famous Crimean Tatars yes it's a French it's a wife it's our actor it's Jamala who is I think she made our uh, her last work it's really amazing he took album old Crimean. Yes, yes. It's it's just amazing. He took so old... It sounds so good. Yes, yes it's really uh, it sounds good. It and you know when I uh, listen this first um, first uh, first time after it was in May, I cried because I don't know. It's so um, it's so sensitive and moments uh, because he took old Crimean Tatar songs, yes, and he write and explain history uh, from what area they are they, they trans she, she translated in, in English and in Ukrainian to um, help people understand uh, the main meaning um, and uh, this, you know music with orchestra it's amazing it's really it's high level i think so she took 15 uh, crimean cities or villages and for or not 15 uh 14 right and she yeah. made a song for each one and uh, it was like returning to childhood when you hear the songs yeah there are lots of a lot of um, it's and the main um, you know value of this album that uh, all of these songs are national songs. I mean, they wasn't tried by someone. Yes, it's like um, our national traditional songs. Old songs. I remember oh. that my yes, yes, uh, grandma uh, sang me when I was a child. And I also like to listen to my grandma when he sang. And it's it was important for all of Crimean Tatars. And uh, it's like, it's really um, complicated uh, work and um, it's very valuable for us. Balakun, a bridge to Ukraine. Join the conversation at balakun.co.